everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, M. Graham Sews. This video tutorial is for this really cute and beautiful bag called the Restoration Mini Crossbody. This is by KMG Handmade. Now you may be thinking this looks a little bit familiar, and you're right, it does. This is a smaller version of the Restoration Handbag, but it does have a few differences. So let's discuss some of the features of this bag, and I'll tell you some of the differences between the handbag and this one. So first, we still have this zipper pocket here. We also have the stitching up the center like we had did on the handbag. One of the main exterior differences is the way the handles are installed. So we use the hidden connector method for the handles, and it is a rolled handle again, but we use the hidden connector method. We have the base, which you can add purse feet, but I decided to omit them, and I just did this really pretty stitching that I really like to do on the bottom. We also have a crossbody bag, just like on the handbag, but we have the crossbody bag strap. Now you can omit this and just have the handles, or you can omit the handles and just have the crossbody bag. Really, this is your bag. Have fun with it, make it your own. It's really your choice. I added both because it's nice when you're just carrying this. If you get tired, you can wear this across your body if you prefer. And you can also wear this on your shoulder as well. Then when you look at the bag, you'll notice there isn't a flap on this one. We have the top zipper closure. I love zipper closures. I prefer them over flaps, so this is really kind of my speed. When you open it up, you have that divider pocket again, and you have the slip pocket again. So we have the slip pocket and still plenty of room on either side of this divider pocket for any of your belongings. And if you wanted, you could add another pocket here. Make it your own. You can omit the divider and just sew it without the divider. It's really your choice. Then she also has in the instructions and on the pattern pieces, if you want to add a focal piece here, so say a panel or maybe some embroidery, there's a little area here on the pattern piece that shows you the optimal space or placing, placement, sorry, for the panel or your embroidery or whatever you want to put here. It's really handy and it can really make your bag your own and you can do a lot of extra fun things to do on the bag. So there's some of the features. It's really fun. I promise it's really not a very long sew, but it does take a little bit of work. And if you've never done the hidden connectors this is a really fun bag to learn it on and it's a really beautiful bag too great for if you're going out on a special occasion say a wedding or graduations are coming up it would make a really nice bag for a little graduation bag anything like that now in terms of the tutorial I wanted to discuss that because I film my tutorials like a sew along so I don't speed up any of the parts where I'm sewing or any of the parts where I'm clipping things or cutting things I don't speed that part up the only parts I don't show is when I have to do something that has doubles or more so for the hidden connectors for example there's four of them I show you how to do one then I go off camera and I do the last three I show you how to install the one side of the handle then I go off and I do the last one and this is just because it makes it so that the tutorial isn't much longer than it already is but you're not missing out on any of the important information because you did see me sew one so you don't really need to sit and see me sew the other ones so what you can do is just pause the video go and finish everything else and then come back and we'll be right at the same place if you are finding that the tutorial is taking a little bit too long for you, you can always speed up because YouTube has that option to fa make the video play faster. You can also slow the video down as well. And another thing is, is you can zoom in with YouTube and see, say something looks like you need a little bit more detail and it's a little bit too far because I'm sewing here. You can zoom in and see exactly what I'm doing. But I do always try to do this and show you what I mean. But sometimes there might be things you need to get a closer look at. So you can zoom in, you can even pause, you can slow it right down. This tutorial is really here to help be a guide for you to help you make the bag. If you do have any questions and something's not exactly clear, there is the other tutorial with the restoration handbag um, that does give some details as well that maybe I didn't say in this one and it might be helpful you to watch that one too. There is also a drop in line. This is a drop in lining and that one is a birth bag. So if you want to make this as a birthed bag, you can watch that tutorial and see how it's done so that you can make this as a birth bag as well. 
If you do have any questions at any time, please email Kristen. That will be the fastest way for you to get a response because I don't always see notifications or comments on the videos, but I do try to come back and constantly check and reply as soon as I can. But if you need something and it's urgent, please do email Kristen. She'll reply to you right away. So now that we've discussed that, we've discussed all the features, we know how the tutorial is filmed, let's get started making our Restoration Mini Crossbody Bag. So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. This is important because it familiarizes you with the construction of the bag, but it is also important because oftentimes designers will give information regarding different interfacings to use, depending on the materials you're using, or sometimes depending on the material you're using, you may need to cut some pattern pieces a little bit differently. So this is important to make note of before you start cutting your materials out. Once you've done that, you can go ahead, cut your pattern pieces out, and then cut all your material and your interfacing out. You can also fuse your interfacing as per the instructions. So some need to be fused now, some get fused later. So fuse what can be fused now, and then you fuse the rest as we go along in the pattern. The other thing I like to do besides fusing interfacings is I like to make center marks on all my pattern pieces and I also like to write what the corresponding letter and number is or just number if that's all there is in the pattern but this one has letters and sometimes numbers so I also like to write that right onto the pattern piece. The reason for that is when we get to that step that calls for this pattern piece, so K1, I will know exactly what the pattern piece is and I'm not going through trying to guess. Another thing I like to do is make any markings that are given in the pattern that I can make now. So markings that I don't need to wait until pieces are sewn together or constructed. I can go ahead and make those now. So I have gone ahead and done that on many of the pattern pieces. I've made markings where they need to be made. The other reason for that is I don't show any rulers, cutting mats, no pattern piece, paper pattern pieces on my table, nothing like that. And the reason for that is for the protection of the designer and also because I film a lot of my tutorials during testing and oftentimes some of the measurements can change or certain seam allowances can change. So I don't want to give any incorrect information as you're trying to sew the bag. So you will need to have the pattern open on another device or open beside you, uh, printed beside you, sorry, on your table so that you can refer to measurements and seam allowances. So I have gone ahead and made some markings, as I mentioned, some I can make now, some I can't. I also cut my zipper tape to length, so I have them labeled with what these are for, and my cording, because I am going to show you how to make the rolled handles, and I'll also show you how to make the crossbody strap. And when you're reading through your pattern, you'll see that the handles are optional. You can skip those if you want, or you can skip the crossbody strap and just have the handles. So the choice is yours. These are things you need to make note of before you start cutting so you don't cut out pattern pieces that you don't need. So once you have everything cut and we're ready to get sewing, we can start on our front exterior or exterior front assembly. And for that, you need your two A pieces. Now, the other thing you need to do is in the pattern, she tells you that there are some markings you need to make, so some seam allowance markings that you need to make. You'll want to pause this video and go ahead and make all those markings now. If you haven't already, you'll want to make all those markings now. And another thing she does mention is that there is a cutout window for optimal placement of any graphics for these pieces, and that's on the pattern piece. So. If you want to use a panel or you want to do some embroidery or something, you can. Kristen has that all figured out for you already with the little cutout for the optimal placement. So you'll also want to refer to that before we start sewing if you are choosing to do that. But because I've already marked all my seam allowances and I've done that all already, we can go ahead and get sewing. Now on your A pieces, you'll notice that there's a side that's angled. So you can tell on the camera here, there's two sides that are angled. The pieces that we're going to sew right now are these straight edges. So you're going to place one B on top of the other, pretty sides touching, and you're going to pin it together along that straight edge. So pin it along that whole straight edge. And then we're going to sew this straight edge with the seam allowance given in the pattern.
trim all your threads. And then we need to press this seam open. Now I'm using a vinyl, so I can't press this with my iron. So what I'm going to do is use some double-sided tape. And you can do the same thing even if you're using quilting cotton. Sorry, that's a bit noisy. Even if you're using quilting cotton, you can still use double-sided tape to help hold it in place if you want. So I'm going to place some double-sided tape along this seam. I should have used my thinner tape. So place it down and then push the seam down so that it's flat. You want this to be flat. like that and then you have the one piece right now that looks like this next we need to fuse the main stabilizer whoops I'm gonna lose some pieces here the main stabilizer to our pattern piece so again I have those marks marked the center marks so I can just line those up with my seam and place it just like that and there is a measurement that you have to use for how far from the top and bottom this needs to be centered and placed on here. So you'll want to refer to that. So I'm going to go and fuse mine to my panel. And because I'm using a sew-in foam, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some basting spray. And then I'm just going to press it with my iron and that'll help hold it in place so that while I'm sewing my bag, it's stuck. And if I do find that it's not really sticking really well, Often what I'll do is use some washable glue or again some double-sided tape which I may use the basting spray and double-sided tape just to really help make sure make sure it stays in place. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come back with this fused in place and then we will continue with stitching down this middle seam here. So I fused the interfacing to the back of the panel A pieces and I did as I said because the basting spray wasn't really holding so I just used some double sided tape to hold my foam in place. So now we need to top stitch down the sides of the seam so on each side of the seam and you'll use the seam allowance given in the pattern. The other thing you want to do is increase your stitch length to the length you like to use for top stitching. And if you're like me and using uh, vinyl or faux leather or something, you may want to switch to a Teflon foot or a walking foot as well, depending on what foot you have. If you don't have either of those, you can also use a piece of masking tape or painter's tape on the bottom of your presser foot, and that'll help it glide across the material, or a piece of tissue paper between the foot and the material. So you'll want to cut all your threads. And I'm just going to leave my Teflon foot on for the rest of the construction because there's other parts where I'm probably going to need it. And I'm just fixing this just because some of it did shift a little bit when I top stitched. So now I'm just making sure it's nice and flat. There we go. So that's how it looks when it's top stitched. So we're going to set this to the side to now. For now, we're going to start our rear assembly. So the exterior rear. And for this, you need your B piece, your B piece um, stabilizer as well. So using the template, she says to fuse the woven interfacing if needed to the back of your B piece. I am using faux leather, so I don't need to use any interfacing on this. Now we need to cut the 
hole in your stabilizer and that hole is given on the paper pattern piece so you'll want to use that paper pattern piece to cut out this hole here and this hole is going to be for the zipper pocket once you have that we will then take this and we will fuse it to the I want to make sure this is the right piece to the B piece using the measurement given in the pattern so that this hole is where it needs to be. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go off camera really quick and fuse this in place. I don't feel you need to sit here and watch me do that. So I'll get this fused to my piece and then I'll come back and we will continue on with making our bag. So we will be sewing in our little zipper pocket. So I'll be right back. I'm just going to attach my foam to my inter to my vinyl, sorry, and then I'll come back. So my foam is attached to my exterior back panel. So now we need to, if you haven't already, draw those seam allowances at the top and bottom of your panel. And I've already gone ahead and done that. This is important because when we finish the bag, it is a drop-in lining. So you wanna have those marks there so you know where to fold. The other thing, if you haven't already, mark your center points. Now you need to take your exterior zipper pocket D and you need to draw a little rectangle here on the back at the top of the D. So this is the top, so the long edge is here. This will be the top where the short edge is. So from the short edge down is where you're measuring. So you'll want to make that little box just as I did. So I've already gone ahead and done that. Now with the exterior B right side up, you need to make a measurement down from the top for where you're placing this and I'm using some vinyl as I mentioned or faux leather sorry so I can't use pins where you were gonna where you're going to see the markings so I'm going to use pins in the opening here to help hold it all together and I need to get this centered on the panel so I'm going to fold this so it is wrong sides together and then we're going to place this D panel right sides together with our exterior B panel. And I'm placing it at that measurement. And as I mentioned previously, I had already gone ahead and made all my measurements and my marks that I could. <clears throat> and I can check like this by holding it in place and check and see if this lines up at the bottom, which it does. So it's at that mark, so I've already made my mark from the top down. It's just a little bit harder to see. <clears throat> I'm just going to use my pencil to just draw it so I can see it. Alright. It's just hard to see because the light sort of blinds me. And you want this to be straight. So there it is, it's nice and straight. So I have it lined up from the top down at the measurement that was given in the pattern. And now, as I mentioned, because I'm using faux leather, I can't pin it where I normally would. So I'm just going to pin it in the center where that opening is that I made. Because that's where our zipper is going to push or be sewn through after so this little piece is going to be cut out so I can put pins through that and it won't matter just be careful not to poke yourself and try to have them in the center if you're doing this so that you can just sew right past them you don't have to worry about hitting them you can sew right past them so now we're going to sew this little box all the way around slightly smaller length than my regular stitch length that I use for sewing a bag together. You can also use a shorter stitch length if you want. I'm just going to remove this pin now. And if you're worried about getting angled stitches in the corners, bring your stitch length to a zero then return it back to the length you were using for stitching and do that at every corner. 
So zero, one stitch, back to the length. And sometimes I don't pivot right away. Sometimes I leave it and then I do that one stitch and then turn it. But just make sure when you turn it, you don't take a stitch until you've taken that one extra stitch in the corner. And what this does is it just locks in that stitch in the corner so you don't get those angled stitches there. And you can do this anywhere you have to turn a corner, including on a strap or anything. So you'll see there, I took my one stitch, return it back to my length I was using, and go all the way down to the next corner. And because this is where I started, I'm just going to back stitch here now. I don't need to take that one stitch because I'm that's where I started. So there's already back stitching and everything there, so they all line up. And now I have a really beautiful cutout or rectangle that I can cut out. So now what you do is you take your seam ripper and you just start the hole with your seam ripper. Then you're going to cut down that center to the corners and then just a little bit away from your corner you're going to cut little V's in the ends here. So don't go all the way to the end, just stop right about there and then cut little angles. It'll look like little Y's. So just like this. And be careful when you're cutting into that corner not to clip those stitches that are in that corner. If you do, not to worry, what you can do is just go back and stitch back over that area. So if you've cut one of the corners, start up here at the top, back stitch, come all the way around, down, and back over and back stitch over here. And what that'll do is relock in those stitches, and it also locks in these stitches that you stitched previously so they don't come undone. And as you'll see, I've cut the little V's out in the corner, so just like that, on both sides. So now I can take my pocket and turn it so that it is wrong sides against the wrong side of this panel. So push it through the opening. Just like that. And you'll notice the foam being out of the way helps make this a nice pocket as well. It makes it nice and flat for you. You're not having to worry about pushing the foam. Now you can take this to your iron and give it a press. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a press with my iron, being very careful not to hit my vinyl. And I may even add some double-sided tape back here to help hold it in place because I think even with pressing with my iron, it may not stay in place. So I will use some double-sided tape just because the vinyl wants to keep lifting. So I will do that as well. So I'm going to go press this pocket and then I'll come back and we will continue on with constructing our bag. All right, so my pocket is now pressed and pushed through to the back and ready to install our zipper. So now we need to get the zipper. So I just need to unclip these all. And I do clip them, keep them clipped together because sometimes I lose zippers. So this just makes it so that they all stay together, easier to find, I don't lose just one. So there's my zipper, and I've already installed my zipper pull on my zipper. If you haven't, you'll want to go ahead and do that now. Now we're going to use some more double-sided tape. And we're going to place our zipper centered in this zipper opening hole that we made. So I'm flipping that upside down for now. using my double-sided tape. I'm going to place it along the long edges of the zipper. It's sticking to my nail more than my zipper tape. center of that zipper opening. <clears throat> center the zipper tape in the opening and then flip it over and if you need to reposition your zipper this is where you can. So position it so it's nice and centered. Mine was 
pretty much there. So stick it down just like that. And I'm going to add some clips here to the bottom just to make sure that this fabric doesn't end up under my presser foot. So I've just got some clips at the bottom there to hold the fabric and you'll see my zipper is in there. So now we're going to stitch all the way around this zipper opening using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And if you don't want any back stitching, what you can do is leave long tails. So just like that. And we'll pull them through and tie them off in the back. And that's what I'm going to do here because I don't want to back stitch. When I, I'm approaching this zipper pull, I'm going to zip it out of the way so that I don't hit it. So I'm going to zip it out of the way. Now I'm going to just move these long thread tails out of the way because I don't want to stitch over them. And I'm going to come all the way back to where I started. And once I'm there, long thread tails and now I'm going to pull them through to the back so you just pull on the back thread and that'll cause a loop from the front thread to come up and that's it it's that easy then we just knot them together so I take them in a pair and I knot them together but first one of these is really long I'm just going to trim them so they're the same length to make it easier for me. So in pairs, and I just tie it off. And if you're really worried about this coming undone, you can put a bit of seam sealant on it, so some fray stop or fray check or a little bit of glue if you want. You will need to let those dry before you continue on. I've never had issues, so I'm not going to. I've been okay with just knotting it. And then it'll look just like that and you'll have a knot back here and no back stitching on the front. Now we're going to leave your panel flipped so you're seeing the wrong side of the um, B panel. You're going to take your pocket and you're going to bring it so it is right sides together so lining up those two short edges. So bring the bottom up to the top and clip it in place. And then I like to clip down the sides. Just like that. And now we're going to sew up one side across this top edge and back down the other side. We're not sewing through the exterior panel, just our pocket. So to do that, you'll flip this over and you'll sew with the exterior facing up. Fold your exterior out of the way and sew. And as you're sewing along, you'll just keep moving your exterior out of the way. <clears throat> and you'll sew this with the seam allowance that's given in the pattern. So you can see I'm keeping my exterior out of the way. And when I pivot here, I just move my exterior again, keeping it out of the way. Just be careful if you're going over those zipper teeth. You don't want to, if you, if you have a hard time, you can hand crank over them. Even though they're nylon and you can sew through them, sometimes my machine gets stuck and I've actually broken a needle, oddly enough. 
So just be careful when you're coming over those zipper teeth if you feel like you can't get over them or it's hitting wrong, just hand crank over it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there it is. Our pocket is now complete. We have a fully functioning pocket. My phone would be too big for this. However, a pen fits perfectly inside there. So you can put your pen in there. If you have some sunglasses or something, they'll fit in there. So now our exterior rear panel is complete. We can move on with the next step. So next up, we're going to work on making our exterior base. And for this, you need your exterior base and also your interfacing. On your exterior base, she gives instructions to mark your seam allowance all the way around. So I have done that on my exterior and then on my interfacing because I realize the interfacing is going to end up covering those up. So really, you only need to put it on your interfacing if you are using interfacing. Now, if you are using a firm interfacing as given in the instructions, what you'll want to do is fuse that to the one side of your interfacing that you're putting on your base stabilizer, your base, sorry. So I've gone and done that. It's fused to one side of my foam. Now, when I attach this, I'll place it so that it is sandwiched between my exterior and my foam so you don't see it at all. So it's in the center there. You're not going to see it. And it's attached instead of being attached to my exterior because sometimes I do find Decoville heavy or Decoville light or whatever interfacing you're using, Peltex, can sometimes cause this to bubble a little bit. So I like attaching it to my foam. That way there, I don't have any issues with that. So now that it's attached, we need to fuse or attach our base stabilizer to our base. So I'm going to clip this all the way around and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to base stitch this all the way around so that it attaches it to the foam and again that heavy interfacing so I use Decoville heavy is sandwiched in between the exterior and the foam excuse me I'm sorry if I keep clearing my throat my allergies are acting up because it is spring so everything's in bloom so my allergies are acting up a little bit so I apologize if I clear my throat a little bit I'll try to maybe pause the camera if I can feel it coming but I'm apologizing now just in case so that's that that's how it's going to look and now I'm going to baste this in place and you can use a long stitch length for this with a smaller seam allowance and then realized I was using the wrong seam allowance so I just veered into the correct seam allowance. I'll just unpick those stitches. So there we go. I'm just going to unpick those few stitches because now we need to trim our foam back so that it is going to be out of our seam allowance when we are attaching our main panels to our base. We're just trying to reduce some of the bulk that's going to be here in this seam by doing that. go so now I'm going to trim that foam back be careful not to trim your stitches just go right up against it and that's what these duckbill scissors are good for because it helps you get nice and close without trimming your exterior accidentally but also making it so that you can get nice and close to those stitches without actually cutting them so trim it all the way around Just like that and then you just throw that foam out and there you have it it is stitched in place all the way around now you can do some fun stitching if you want so I'm going to do that I'm going to do some fun stitching and I don't have a rhyme or reason for how I do my stitching I just sort of do whatever I just 
like the way it looks. Almost like a shooting star right now, the way I'm stitching it. If you want, you can draw a design out and stitch a design. I would be careful with how much stitching you're doing though. If you're wanting to really do a design, what I would do is start with a larger piece, stitch your design, then trim your bottom panel to the size it needs to be. And that way there, if there is any shrinkage or anything, you'll be able to make sure it stays the same size. you'll see I'm just sort of doing anything I just like having this stitching I just find it looks kind of fun Oops. and I do back stitch at start and stop just to make sure that those stitches don't come undone as I'm stitching along <coughs> excuse me I'm sorry like how it looks when I do this kind of stitching it just looks really you can see it better on the back here but I just think it looks really pretty on the bottom of a bag now you can add purse feet and if you are adding purse feet you'll want to make the marks for where your purse feet are going to be before you do any stitching because you don't want to cut holes where your stitching is to install your purse feet because that'll make your stitching unravel so you'll want to make the marks first then do your stitching but that's how it looks even the wrong side looks really pretty. So that's how our bottom panel looks. Once you've installed your purse feet, don't forget to apply some tape over top of them, so some duct tape over the prongs. That just ensures that they don't rub through over time. And I also find it's like an extra bit of security. It sort of help holds, helps hold them in place. So once you're done with this, you can put this to the side for now. We're going to move on to creating our rolled handles. <laughs> Excuse me. And if you are creating rolled handles, you'll have two pieces of material cut like this, and then you'll have your cording. So the first thing we need to do is take our E piece, and we are going to fold these so the long edges meet in the center. And I'm using a vinyl. You may be using quilting cotton. And if you are, you can just go ahead and press this in half. Once it's pressed, you can then fold the long edges in to meet that crease that you made all the way down and press and repeat that for the other side and press so that both those long edges meet in the center. However, as I mentioned, I'm using vinyl, so I need to use some double-sided tape. So I've made a mark down the center on both of these panels. Oops, I see a thread on my bottom. I'm just going to cut it now while I see it before I forget about it because I don't want peekaboo threads. So I have that line down the center and I'm going to place some double sided tape on both sides of the line. I could have used my thicker tape for this actually. So I have the double sided tape placed on both sides of the line, remove the paper backing from one side, and then just fold these edges in to meet the center line. And then we'll repeat that for the second side. Now I like to leave a little bit of a gap between so I don't make the centers quite touch and that's just for when we're folding it again in half. You have that bit of room and you don't end up with the bulk in the center when you fold it. So there's just a slight gap here in the middle so they don't touch. If you weren't folding this in half again, so if we weren't folding it like this, 
then you wouldn't need to worry about it not touching in the center. It would be okay if it did. But because we're going to be folding it again, I left that small little gap there just to make sure that there's not that extra bulk in the center. Now that we have that pressed, we need to place some tape along the center line. And there's a measurement from edge to edge how far that is going to be placed. So I would have already gone ahead and made that mark before I started filming and I can just see it so I'm just going to redraw it and I'm going to place the tape and this tape is going to help hold that cording in place for us. Remove the paper backing and then we're going to place your cording on top of that tape in between those marks that you made and you want it to be placed right in the center just like that so we have our cording down the center but it doesn't go right to the edges as you'll see there's a bit of the edges that are not that have no cording in it then we'll fold this directly in half and pin it all the way along and you can use some double-sided tape here again if you prefer. I'm just going to use my pins and hold it in place as I sew. So we need to start and stop, and I'm just trying to feel for where it is where that cording is. Oh, I can see the line actually. So we need to start and stop where that cording is. So at that mark we made is where you're starting and stopping sewing. So make your mark and you'll start sewing at that line you made all the way down. So where you're sewing is just where the cording is running along. So that's where you're sewing. So we'll sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I want to start with some long thread tails so I don't get any nesting of any sorts. Oops, a little bit hard to see. There we go. You'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And just sew all the way down. Take your time to keep a nice, accurate seam allowance. So there it is so far that's how it looks now we're going to open this up here and you're going to press these edges that weren't stitched you're going to press them I'm just going to move my light so you can see a little bit more we're going to press them so that they are now meeting in the center so see where that center seam is that we originally had here those are going to be lined up with that so you're pressing it opposite how it is right now. So that's how it's folded. Open it up and you can see that center seam. Fold these folded edges into where that center seam is, just like that. And I'm going to put a clip over it. So you're just lining these folded edges up with that center seam in the center. So it ends up pushing it so that it's pushed like that and I hope you can see that so that they come in the center and it makes this flat so that when we stitch this in it's nice and flat here so again I'll show you one time so that's how it looks 
take the folded edges and bring them into the center so they line up with that center crease that we made previously. Hold it in place with a clip. You can even use some double-sided tape if you feel better using some double-sided tape. Just like that. And now we're just going to stitch that just across it. So we're just basting across this to help hold it in place. And I'll show you how it looks once I have it basted on both ends. And this just holds it flat. That's all this is doing is holding this flat. So that when you put it inside the bag, because this is going to be done with hidden connectors, it'll be nice and flat for you. And that's how it looks. So see how they meet in the center? So here's that center line and they meet in the center. That's the one side and that's the raw side. And that's on both sides and the handles will look like this when we attach them. So I'm going to go and make the second handle because I don't feel you need to watch me make that again. If you need to, you can pause or you can rewind back and rewatch it again. So again, we're folding everything. You're folding the long edges in to meet the center. Then you put tape down the center, place your cording in the center using the measurements given in the pattern. Then you fold it in half again, stitch along that edge, starting and stopping at those marks you made and then you fold the edges in like this. So I, again, I'm going to pause the video, make my second handle, and then I'll come back and we will continue on. So there's both my handles done. I have stitched them all the way down and then stitched these edges again. That makes it nice and flat. So I'm going to place these to the side. We're going to move on to installing our um, connectors here. So we need to make the holes for where the handles are going to go. So you need one of your exterior panels and your eye pieces. So we're going to place these at the measurements given in the pattern. So if, by the way, if you're not installing these handles, skip this step, fast forward until we get to the next steps where we're sewing other parts of the bag. I'll tell you what steps that's going to be. So you're going to skip all the way to the full exterior assembly continued. So if you're not doing this, you don't need to follow along here with this part of the video. So you'll take your eyepiece and using the measurements given in the pattern, you'll place them so you're aligning a short raw edge with the top edge here of your panel at that mark given in the pattern. So you can just clip it in place just like that. And I've gone ahead and made that marking again on my, um, I want to make sure I'm calling this the right piece. So the, hang on the optional handle connector facing, so piece I. So I've already gone ahead and made that mark on the connector facings. So I'm just going to pin these both in place using the measurement given in the pattern. And as I mentioned previously, I don't use any rulers or anything on camera, so I had made those marks previously. So you place them just like that, so they are right sides or pretty sides together, and the short raw edge of the handle facing is lined up with the long raw edge at the top of your exterior panel. So I've gone ahead and done that. And now we're going to stitch, sorry, I just had a moment there. Now we're going to stitch around this line. So you've made a mark, so you've measured up from the bottom and you've made a mark, the length that's given in the pattern and up from the bottom. We're going to stitch around this line using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And she also recommends using a shorter stitch length to stitch this. <clears throat> so you're going to stitch all the way around. And don't forget to back stitch. So stitch all the way around that little opening, that little line you made. And you may have to keep pivoting and checking that you're getting around that line. <clears throat> And you're just making a little rectangle all the way around that line you drew. It's a little bit tricky because it's hard to see. 
just take your time and keep pivoting and checking to make sure that you're stitching all the way around so just like that so you can see I've stitched all the way around that little opening now we will take our seam ripper just had to find mine and you're going to cut in the center of this rectangle so the same way that we did when we cut the opening for our zipper pocket that we did here and I just start the little opening and with my scissors I'm going to cut the rest of the way and I'm just making sure that pocket stays out of the way the top of the pocket and again be careful not to clip your stitches go into the corners but don't clip those stitches <clears throat> so I've cut the V's into the corners and then we're just going to push this through and just be careful because it is a small opening you don't want to cause it to rip so I just push it through with my finger one side and then I take the other side and I just push it through again with my finger and pull and you'll see it's now on this side so you can press this with your iron I'm just going to use some double-sided tape to help hold it in place for now to keep it out of the way Actually, I don't think we're using no I don't need to worry about double-sided tape right now maybe just on the bottom edge I'll put some double-sided tape there to hold that one in place but not at the top because we do pull that down after so I don't want to have too much tape all over everything but the bottom one I will and again just remember that your pocket is here so you can just move your pocket out of the way if if you've started with your um, panel that has the pocket on it like I did I should have started with the other panel. So I've just used some double sided tape to help hold that down. Just the bottom. And I'm keeping my pocket out of the way for now because I don't want to stitch that pocket. Maybe it's good that I started with this panel so you can see what to do. So I put some double sided tape on the bottom and I just push this down to help hold it in place. And I'm just pressing this with my hands. If you've used quilting cotton, you can go ahead and take this to your iron and give it a press so that it'll press it nice and flat. Now, we need to take one of our handles, so this handle here, with your panel right sides up, you're going to feed one of these short ends into that opening that we created. So push it in, and I'm going just up to that line that we made. So remember where your um, cording stops, that's where you're going to push this into, just up to that cording. So just like that just to where that cording is that's it that's as far as you need to go and when you're pushing it through you want the side with the seam here to be facing as if it was in towards the bag you don't want that out I mean you could have it facing out if you want but you don't want that facing out so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to use a clip to help hold it in place for now and then, turn the pan while the panel's turned over, you're going to pull this lining top piece down and clip it to the bottom piece. And you're basically making a little sandwich with the handle in the middle here. So you're making a little sandwich, just like that. So if you look, I'll redo that again. So the lining top piece is up. I'm just going to make sure my handle is straight. So the lining top piece is up bring it down so right now I see my handle and the bottom piece bring this down just like that creating a little sandwich with the handle in the middle and just clip it in place just like that now this is going to be the trickiest part of this whole thing because we need to stitch this so flip it so you're looking at the right side right now of your exterior 
and making sure your handle is still sandwiched in between, you're going to fold the exterior out of the way just like this. So have your exterior out of the way and we're going to stitch closely as we can to the top of the hole without catching the exterior pan or panel at all. So you're stitching just over top of your handle connector facings and your handle. That's it. It's just those three layers is what you're stitching. So just make sure your handle is still in there nice and good for you. And mine is kind of slipping out a little bit. So I'm going to push it in a bit more. Remember, it's going in as far as that mark is where you started and stopped sewing. So that's where you want it to be. And if it's slipping, just do what I did and reclip it in place. So there we go. Move your exterior out of the way and stitch as closely as you can to the exterior, but don't stitch over your exterior. And this is where it may be a bit bulky for your machine, depending on the materials you've used. So you may need to switch to a bigger needle and maybe even a walking foot because a walking foot will help or a humper jumper. And I'm just back stitching a few times just to really make sure it's nice and secured. And there you go. Nicely secured. Just like that. It's all secured in. And then we can add a rivet to rivet it in and that'll help also hold it in place. So you can take this, press it down and add a rivet here. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go add a rivet and I'm also going to sew my handle, repeating that same process for the rest of the way. So again, line up the short edges of your handle facing eye to the top edge of your exterior panel. You will line it up with the mark given from the edge over. So you'll line up the edge here from the edge over. You'll then make a mark here using the measurement given from the bottom up and the length that's given. Once you're done that, you will then stitch around this little line using the seam allowance given in the pattern and you'll go all the way around creating a box or sorry, a rectangle box. Once you have that done, you can cut down the center and make little V's on each end, same way as we did for the zipper. Then you're going to push the facing through to the wrong side. Then you'll put your handle through, sandwich the handle between the two layers and stitch it in place. And that's it. And you'll do that for all the, all the, the interfa all the handle facing, sorry, and the two ends of the handles. So I'm going to go off camera, finish that up. I'm going to add some rivets and then I'll come back and we will continue on. So all my hand, or both my handles, not all, there's only two, both my handles are installed into the panels, so that's how they look. Now we need to take our exterior main panels and place them right sides together, so pretty side stretching. And we're going to clip just one of these side edges together. So line up the top and bottom and clip the edges all the way down. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So make sure you're at the stitch length that you like to use when sewing together a bag. And you shouldn't be sewing over your interfacing right now, you should just be sewing just beside it. If you're having a hard time getting right beside it, use a zipper foot and that'll help you get close without stitching over it. Now we're just sewing a second seam just to the outside of those stitches we just stitched. Now we're going to press the seam open. Use some double sided tape if you need to help hold it open. So that's what I'm going to do because I'm using vinyl so I can't press with my iron. So I'm just going to place some double sided tape to be too wide. So 
So we'll press both those open. Looking for my other tape holder right here. That one's too wide. Just a little bit too wide, so I'm using a thinner oops, tape. we go so the double-sided tape will help hold that down and now what we're going to do is top stitch down the seam on both sides of the seam so just like this and we'll top stitch on both sides of the seam using the seam allowance given in the pattern And if you've made the restoration handbag, this may all seem very familiar to you right now. So a lot of the construction is the same, but there is some differences. So for example, the way the pattern pieces are cut, adding the handles with the hidden connectors is different. So there's a lot of differences and that it's a lot smaller too. But some of these steps, like what we just did here, are going to seem very familiar to you. So next we need to clip this second side together, same thing, and sew it all the way down. We're going to repeat the same thing for this side. So stitch that, return your stitch length back to your length you use for structural seams. second row of stitching. And remember that second row of stitching is just to the outside of the seam and I ran out of bobbin so I'm going to reload my bobbin and then I will come back and we will continue on with stitching our bag. Okay so I've refilled my bobbin and I've stitched or finished stitching down that side. So now I'm going to press this open just as we did previously. And this time it's going to be a little bit more tricky to top stitch down along the sides because we now have a bag that's round. So we need to go very slowly and very carefully, but I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a little bit tricky, but it's doable. your stitch length to the length you want and you're going to place this just like this on your machine so you're going to be stitching in towards the bag so you can see it's still wrong sides out and as I'm stitching I'm just going to keep moving my exterior here that's in the way out of the way so just watch so here we go and I'm just going slow taking my time and there we go. See, I just moved this out of the way a little bit so I can see it again. Just make sure nothing is underneath that shouldn't be. And just keep moving the panel. So as you can see, I'm kind of crumpling it up, sort of rolling it up as I go so it stays out of the way. Just like that. So I've just started with my presser foot here 
and all I did was I kept moving this so as my presser foot came closer I just kept moving this so see how I ball it up or crumple it up and I just keep going all the way now I'm going to repeat that but I'm going to go the opposite way now so the handles are going to be facing out towards that side and again just keep moving this part that's up here out of the way so you don't sew over it and just go slowly you don't need to go fast you want to make sure you keep a nice accurate seam allowance and I promise the more you do this the easier it does get it's just getting familiar with holding all that fabric and how to hold the fabric and going nice and slowly to keep an even speed I'm going to trim all my threads so you can see here I hope this is the side I think this is the side you can see here I stitched up both sides and I'm just going to look and see yeah that's the side because this is all creased so that's it that's what it looks like right now now it's time to attach our base and to do that we also need to make some marks I'm just trying to find my pencil so our quarter markings that I cut off with when I cut off my phone but I can still see where some of them are I'm just going to measure here and make sure There we go. All right. So now we need to attach our base. Sorry about that. So you're going to match these side seams here. So these seams that we stitched when we stitched the one side in the round to the sides of your base. So you're going to mark stitch or pin those together and then you're going to pin the centers together as well. So pin the centers. and then pin those side edges as well. So the seam here on the one exterior panel will line up with the center and then your side seams will line up with your center marks on your base. And then you just keep clipping it or pinning it all the way around. So I'm just adding a couple of extra clips first and then I'm going to start pinning. So pin it in, easing the fabric in as you go and it will feel like a tight fit, but trust me, it works and it makes the most beautiful bag bottom that you'll ever have, I'm sure. Another thing we're going to do is make snips in these curves and what those snips will do is it'll open up the fabric so that when you're sewing around the curve, it gets nice and flat and it doesn't create any little puckers on you. Again, this will feel tight. Not to worry, you didn't do anything wrong. It's supposed to be a little bit tight to give you a really nice bag bottom or bag bum. So keep pinning. I'm using lots of clips. I don't want anything shifting on me as I'm sewing. And also remember we drew our seam allowances on earlier this will be really helpful for you to keep an accurate seam allowance as you're sewing this base to the bottom so that you just stitch right on top of that line you drew or the seam allowance you drew to help you keep it nice and accurate and it'll help you get those nice curves too on the corners here because you're just following along your seam allowance Now, normally I don't mark my seam allowance, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I did. It's really helpful, especially when you're a beginner sewer, to have seam allowances marked, 
And, to, and especially if you're using a new machine and you're not sure where the measurements are on the machine, it really does help keep nice accurate seam allowances. So now we're going to make snips within the seam allowance in those curves and you're going to notice as soon as you make a, the first snip it already pushes it open. Just make some snips along the curves. Stay within your seam allowance. Don't go beyond it. Do all four corners. And right now, because I have so many clips, I just go between the clips to make the snips. My scissors just fit right in between. All right. So now we're going to sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And as I mentioned, we're using that seam you drew. So I'm going to grab out my extension table. I just find it helps hold the bag from falling down on me. And start stitching. Make sure you're not at a stitch length for top stitching. And just stitch all the way around. And if you need to use a stiletto to help hold things, go ahead and use a stiletto. Sometimes I use my awl if I can't find my stiletto. with my base down so it was against the bed of my machine. You can sew with your exterior panels against the bed of the machine if you prefer. I just feel that sewing it with the base at the bottom, you can see if you're going to get any pleats here in your exterior and you can kind of fix them as you're sewing along. So there it is. You can sew a second line of stitching just beyond your first. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm not so concerned about having my extension table now because the fabrics, I don't need to worry about them shifting on me in any way. Just right outside that first seam. So right beside it. And this is just for extra security. And then we're going to trim this seam allowance down after, just to reduce the bulk. And I'll use some pinking shears. Pinking shears are good for when you have these curves here on the corners. It'll help them push out nicely. But first, before I do that, I like to check just to make sure that everything looks nice. And if I'm noticing there's any puckers or pleats or anything, what I like to do is fix it so that there isn't any puckers or pleats or anything like that. And you'll see your base will have a beautiful finishing of the stitching that I did when I did that decorative stitching kind of threw me off. So now I'm just trimming my seam allowance using pinking shears. You can use regular scissors if you prefer. There we 
go. So seam allowances trimmed down. Now we're going to turn it right sides out and do a double check again. And see how beautiful that base looks? It just looks gorgeous. Just kind of fixing. There we go. Look at how beautiful that base looks. Once you press it and everything, it'll be perfect and beautiful. Now you may have added purse feet, so yours may look a little bit different because you have purse feet added. I didn't add the purse feet to this one. I figured it's really small. I don't really need it. But look at how beautiful that looks. Isn't that perfect? I just love how it looks always such a nice base with this design and it's a cute little bag too cute little handbag or not handbag um, crossbody little crossbody bag but this makes a cute little handbag too with the little handles so now we're going to put this off to the side and you can take a little break if you want but we're going to continue on with the exterior so if you want to take a break just pause this video or remember where the timestamp is for where you're at and you can take your break you can come back and work on this tomorrow or another day or you can just pause and maybe go have some lunch or some dinner or something and then come back and continue on I'm going to continue on with making the interior so the lining so we're going to move on with the lining now so interior slip pocket is what we need next and that is piece O and the trim as well we will need uh -oh. okay. and then the trim so that's what these pieces look like so you can fuse some interfacing if you'd like to the back of your piece here I'm not going to I'm just leaving it like this so now what you need to do is make a mark in from both long edges and make some marks and once you have those marks made you will then take the long edges and press them to meet those marks so I'm going to go off camera I'm going to go press these in to meet those marks and then I'll come back and we will continue on so I pressed the sides of the slip pocket in to meet that line that we drew on both sides and I actually sprayed it with a bit of water and then pressed it with my iron just to give it a nice crisp press. You can use steam. If you're using a material that you can't press, you can use some double-sided tape to press it down. And even if you're using quilting cotton and you want to use double-sided tape to really help hold it in place, you can as well. So now that we have those long edges pressed in to meet that line, we're going to fold this in half so it's wrong sides together. We will clip it along those edges. So you're folding the short edges up to meet each other and it's going to be wrong sides together and I know this may seem a little bit odd because we have this top raw edge here but we're going to conceal that with our slip pocket trim. So pin it in place. Now we're going to place the slip pocket trim over top. So you're going to make a mark in the center of your slip pocket trim and we're going to place it on top here to cover up this edge here. So you're going to use some double sided tape. If I can find where it starts right there. We're going to use some double sided tape and I'm going to place it on both sides of the line. If you're using a thicker tape, you can just go right down the center. <clears throat> Remove the paper backing. Now 
I'm just going to remove these clips from the top, but I'm going to keep my clips along the side edges here because I don't want this to shift on me. And I'm going to line this up and I'm not going to touch the center line. I'm just going to come below it because you will have bulk there. So in order for these to line up, you don't want it to touch the center line exactly because this adds bulk in the center. So you just below that center line is where you're going to place it. But line up these side edges of the slip pocket trim piece. So piece P and then fold it over. And when you're folding it over, make sure your slip pocket trim is lining up on the sides here and then just fold it over and press it in place. Now I'm going to add clips here to help hold this down because what's happening is, is because we didn't sew the top of the panel together, this wants to come apart. And you could have, before you added your slip pocket trim, you could have top stitched or base stitched that top together. Now we're going to top stitch the trim using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So top stitch it in place. edges here you want that to stay clipped together for now and that's how it looks so I'm going to leave these clips on the sides here for now just because I don't want this to pull open but that's how the trim looks top stitched in place on top of your slip pocket so we're going to place this to the side for now we will move over, we will move on, not move over. We will move on to create our center divided pocket. So we need all piece N, all of pieces N and your zipper for the divider pocket. And then we need our zipper tabs. So first you need to prepare your zipper and cut it to length if you haven't already. And add your zipper pull, which I have done. I don't know why I can't get this tape off today. some reason the tape doesn't want to come off. All right, so mine's already been trimmed to length, so I don't need to trim it, and I've already added my zipper pull to this zipper pocket. So now we need to take our zipper tabs, and you'll have two that'll look like this, and they'll be the short edge and the long edges. Right now what we're going to do is fold them in half so those short edges meet. So fold it in half, wrong sides together so your short edges meet. And I'm just going to press this with my hands, just like that, so you have a little piece that looks like this. Open it back up and fold those short edges again in to meet that center line that you just made when you made it, that crease when you folded it in half. So bring both short edges in to meet that center line and press. And again, I'm just using my fingers to press it into the center right now. You can definitely take this to your iron and press it with your iron. So now you have a piece that looks like this where the two raw edges are folded into the center. Now you're going to take that and refold it in half again so those raw edges are hidden. And then you're going to slide your zipper into the center to meet that crease. So the zipper, the raw end of the zipper, will hit that crease. I actually told you to fold these wrong. Sorry. You're folding them so the long edges, I just looked at the picture and I realized I folded it wrong. So the long edges are folded in half and then folded into the center. It's just a very small little tab. I'm used to folding it the other way. Sorry about that. So same thing, but it's the long edges. So it's folded with the long edges in to meet the center. Very sorry about that. So same thing, long edges in to meet the center and then fold it in half again. And see, it's just a very small little <coughs> zipper tab. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a very, very small little zipper tab. 
And you will have that overhang. That's what made me realize that I did it wrong is because I didn't have any overhang doing it that way. You will have overhang on both sides and that's okay because we're going to trim that. So again, fold it in half, wrong sides together so the long edges, not the short edges, the long edges meet. Open it up, fold the long edges in to meet that center crease. Just like that. And then fold it in half again so that the center is folded again where you first folded it. And you just get this long, skinny zipper tab. You can take this to your iron and give it a press if you want. I just pressed with my hands and it's fine. And now we're going to top stitch these in place. And the way these tabs are, it doesn't change the length of the zipper at all. So your zipper stays the same length because you're putting the tab in directly into the center, the zipper directly into the center of the tab. So you don't change the length of your zipper at all, with meaning it doesn't make it longer. These are just here to help conceal the raw edge of the zipper. Now we're going to trim the zipper tabs so they are even with the zipper. And this will also help you trim up any of your threads, but if there's any extras that you didn't get cut when you were trimming, go ahead and trim them down. Now I'm going to mark the center of my zipper and I'm going to do this just within my seam allowance. So I'm just marking the center of my zipper within the seam allowance. Now we need to take one of our piece ends so the divider zipper pocket and we need to place one of the zipper the zipper right side down centered on top here on the top edge so if you look at these divider pockets they sh they're shaped like that they go wider at the bottom so this the smaller edge is your top edge the wider wider part is the bottom so when you're cutting out your pieces make sure to mark it with the T in case so that you don't make any mistakes. And I also realized I never marked my center point on these pieces, which is going to make it a little bit tricky for when I'm adding my zipper. So I'm just going to do that on two pieces here. So again, you can mark a T so you know where the top is. This is handy so you don't get things turned around. Just like that so I'll use that for the other exterior so again here's my exterior place it right sides up and place your zipper right sides down centered so that's where it's important to have those center marks made so you're going to place it centered on top and you can base this in place you can also use double-sided tape to help hold it in place if you want so I'm going to baste it in place so I'm just pinning it along and make sure that it's centered. So I'm going to baste it along the whole edge there. Stitch length being returned. It's not so important to have a stitch length returned when you're just basting, but just so I don't forget when we move on. Slide my zipper out of the way. All your threads so there it is we have one side attached now we need to place another piece N which will be your lining on top of this and you're going to create a zipper sandwich so piece N lining will be right sides against the wrong side of your zipper line up all the way across pin it so I line up the top edges and if you have your center marks you can line up the center marks and it all the way across 
and then we're going to stitch this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And you're going from one edge all the way across to the other edge. And when you approach that zipper head, just slide it out of the way. So there it is. I'm going to zip it out of the way. So from one edge all the way to the next. Oh. Now we're going to flip the entire unit over. And you want to press this. You again can take this to your iron. I often just do pressing with my fingers so I don't have to get up so much. So just pressed it with my fingers. As you'll notice, I used my nail and that makes it nice and flat. And now we're going to top stitch under this zipper here. So top stitch all the way across. Just be careful when you go past your zipper, you don't want to hit that pull. And that's one half. So now we're going to repeat all those steps for the second half of the pocket. So again, line up the center marks on the zipper with the center marks on the panel end piece. Clip it, then we'll base this in place. And again, if you've made the restoration handbag, this will look or be the same as what we did in that construction. Except for this pocket, it's a lot smaller and really cute. This is sort of like making a pouch almost. It feels like you're making a pouch with inside the bag. So it's just a little pouch really that's inside the bag that divides the bag up inside and gives you some extra area to stay organized. So now we're going to stitch all the way across using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And remember when you get to where that zipper pull is, slide it out of the way. Keep your fabrics nice and straight. Now we're going to top stitch this one. Same thing, press your fabrics. So now we're going to top stitch this all the way across. That's how it looks right now. We're going to fold the pocket in half so, so that the lining is inside. Line up all your edges. So the bottom edges, line them up. And pin it. So get everything all nicely lined up, pin it in place. And then we're going to baste all the way around the side and the bottom. So both sides and the bottom are going to be basted. And this will just help hold it together so that we can put it in the lining. And I'm going to pay special attention to this top corner here and make sure that these top corners stay lined up. going to do is start at the top here and stitch down and you can leave this at a basting at a top stitch length for this basting stitching here because this will be hidden in the seams it's just to hold this all together for you to trim it so it's even. Just shift it on that one corner. 
trim all your threads so you don't get any little peekaboo threads later. There we go. So all my threads are trimmed. Now we have our little divider pocket constructed so far. Moving right along, we're going to construct the closure panel. So put this to the side for now. You need your top zipper. So you'll want to install your zipper pull if you haven't already. And cut this to length. And you need all your closure panels. So these are piece H, and there's some marks that you need to make on the ends of these panels. So you'll want to go ahead and make those marks on the ends of the panels. So I already did. You'll see the mark here from the short edge over on both sides on all four pieces. So your two exteriors and your two linings. Once you have your zipper trimmed to length and your zipper pull installed, we're going to turn those edges so the open edges, so not the edge at the bottom that stays closed, but this open edge. So open your zipper, and we're going to turn these edges under at a 90 degree angle, just to give it a stop on the end. And I will link below to a video I did where I go more into depth and instruction on how to do this. But what you do is you take it and you pinch the, the zipper down away from itself, so they go wrong sides together, then you take the zipper teeth and bring it so that it goes beside or just over top of where you've pinched. So pinch and you bring the zipper teeth. Oops, I'm trying to do this so you can see. Pinch and bring the zipper teeth so that it's over top of where you've pinched. And usually you draw a little line sometimes, but it's just pinch it, line up that edge, and then the zipper teeth, see how it goes across so it comes up and then it goes out and that just stops the zipper tape from or the zipper pull from sliding off your zipper tape and again I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel I'll link it below in the description so that you can watch that so pause this video and go watch that because it goes into more instruction on how to do this I'm just trying to get this perfect sometimes perfect doesn't happen though My hands aren't cooperating today. And then I just place a pin to hold it in place. So again, pinch it down and then turn it. So pinch down so that the zipper tape is wrong sides together. Line up your side edges and then bring the zipper teeth over top of where you've pinched. So you're just turning it at a 90 degree angle. And it's hard to do while I'm showing it on camera. I'm glad I did that other little tutorial. Now use a pin to stick it in place. And what it looks like on the back, it looks like you have a little triangle back here because you've turned it. So now I'm going to stitch over top of where it is. So I'm going to hand crank this a little bit and then I'll move out my pin. And don't worry if the zipper tape shifts just a smidge like mine did. It's okay. It doesn't have to stay perfectly lined up, but that's how it'll look. I'm just going to trim that other thread off. That's how it'll look when you're done. So wrong side, right side. I'm going to do that with the other side. I'm just going to stitch it in place. Sometimes it takes a bit of practice to get this right, but once you get it, it's super easy. And I'm hoping that little extra video tutorial will help. So that's the right side and that's the wrong side. And I'm just going to make sure my camera didn't go in focus there. There we go. So there we go. That's our zipper so far. Now, 
And let's see where we are. So now with an exterior panel, closure panel H, right side up, and the folded end facing to the right, so your zipper facing to the right, if you do this to the left, it's okay, it's not going to change anything for you. You are going to place your zipper tape with the closed end. There's a mark that you need to make, so make it. Make that mark now. You can go off, you can pause this and go make that mark. I've already made that mark, but that's where we're going to line up those zipper teeth with that mark. So the zipper teeth are lined up with that mark. So the teeth that go up over, like here, that's what's going to line up at that mark. And then we're going to baste this in place. using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Oh, I skipped a step, sorry. I keep skipping steps. We need to fold one of the ends, that's why I was just looking at that, to the wrong side. So not only making those marks, but folding them, but because I've used some vinyl, I can't do that on this end. So you're just folding one of the short edges in at that mark you made. Sorry about that. Jumping ahead. So just one short edge gets folded. press this one there we go all right back to where we were so again you need to make a mark from the short raw edge over and then we're going to place our zipper teeth so it's right at that mark And then we will base this in place. And if you're more comfortable, you can leave your zipper pull off right now if you're comfortable with that being off or just slide it so it's right out of the way. And we're going to stitch across this all the way across using the seam allowance given in the pattern. halfway through where that edge is folded. Trim your threads. Now we're going to place the lining. So the two folded edges will be on the same side and the two raw edges will be on the same side. So place it right sides together, the lining on top of the exterior. So the lining is right sides together with the wrong side of the zipper. Clip it all the way across. And I need to shift my lining over a little bit. to stitch up the short edge across where the zipper is and go about halfway through that folded edge and you're going to use the seam allowance given in the pattern so stitch up the short edge when you get to the corner pivot and stitch across the zipper tape and I'm going to stop about halfway through that fold and then back stitch. Trim your threads. 
now we need to trim the corner here. So trim it, and then I like to trim down this side as well, just to reduce the bulk. I don't trim where the zipper is just because I have had it fray on me before, so I leave the zipper exactly how it is. But that's how it looks when you've cut and trimmed it. So you've cut the corner and you've trimmed it. Now we're going to turn this. So it is right sides out and carefully poke out that corner. Be very careful. And you can take this to your iron and give it a press. I'm just finger pressing again. Using some pins or some clips to hold it in place. clipping it all along and now we're going to top stitch all around the edges so top stitch the short edge across the zipper down this other short edge and across the bottom the first side looks with your zipper attached to the panel. So we're going to repeat that for the remaining panel. So line up the zipper, so zipper wrong sides down, so right side of the zipper against the right side of your closure panel. And remember we made a mark from this short edge over. That's where you're lining up those zipper teeth, right at that mark, pin it in place, And then we're going to stitch this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm going to stop, as I mentioned before, right about halfway through where the folded edge is. lining so it is right sides against the wrong side of the zipper line up your side edges and line up those folded edges as well long raw edge line that up pin it in place and then we're going to stitch this all the way across up the one short side here that's not folded and across the zipper So use the seam allowance given in the pattern and you'll notice I like to back stitch when I get to a corner here. I find that just helps reinforce that area. And if you find that your fabric has shifted a little bit and you need to adjust the lining, go ahead and just fix the fold so the folds stay lined up. Again, trim that edge don't trim your zipper just trim that edge so it looks like that turn it right sides out poke out that corner gently poke out the corner press this
And now I'm going to top stitch this up one short edge across where the zipper teeth are, down the other short edge, and across the raw edge. your closure panel all done. We have installed the zipper and we have the closure panel on. Now moving on, whoops, if you want you can attach your hardware to the end of your zipper. I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to wait for the end just in case I feel like I want to take my zipper pull off. I have that option and I don't have to worry about it. So now we're going to move on to the full interior assembly and for this you need to mark the centers and as you'll notice I've marked my seam allowance here as well but you need to mark the centers of your panels if you haven't already then you're going to take one of your lining K2 pieces and we're going to place the slip pocket centered on this piece so fold the slip pocket in half and grabbing my pins, I'm going to place this centered, but also there's a mark we need to make from the bottom of K2 up, and I've already gone ahead and done that. So I'm placing it at that mark, and I'm placing it centered on this panel. So I'm lining up this center seam that I made when I folded it in half, and I'm placing it at that line that we made. And that's when we're going to close up this side here of this pocket. Because remember we didn't sew up these sides, so we're going to be sewing them up now when we attach this to the lining. So now what we're going to do is sew down one side across the bottom and up the other side. And don't forget to back stitch at start and stop and use the stitch length you use for structural seams. Now you can add some rivets to the sides here if you want. I'm going to leave it without the rivets. I don't feel that I want them there so I'm not going to add them but you can add rivets right here in the corners to help with the strength of the pocket. I've backstitched quite a bit so I'm okay I'm not going to add them. Now we're going to place this one to the side just for now. If you're adding a crossbody strap you will have two crossbody strap connectors and they are named Q. We need to grab our double sided tape and we're going to fold the long edges in to meet the center. So I've made a mark down the center and I'm going to fold those long edges in. If you're using quilting cotton, you can press it into the center using your iron, but I'm using this vinyl and I'm going to use my thicker tape. So I just have to do it once. So I'm going to place it right down the center on both pieces. Just like that. So fold the long raw edges in to meet the center. And these ones here 
you can have them touching as I was mentioning previously when we made the handles I said I didn't have them touch but here I do because we're not folding these in half again so long raw edges in to meet the center just like that now we need to top stitch these long edges got a little bit messed up while I was top stitching my connectors and I ended up making that whole bag not realizing that the video was a little bit messed up and got all the way through filming it and then went to edit the tutorial and realized that from top stitching my connectors on was not good there were some parts missing parts that were where I had stopped the video to go off video that I'd recorded and then parts that were sort of only filmed half. I don't know what happened, I'm not 100% sure, but I recut a whole new bag out and sewed it all the way to this step where we top stitched our strap connectors. So you'll see I've top stitched both of these. So they're both top stitched, so all you'll do is top stitch down both the long edges on both the connectors. And then now, continuing from that, we need to add our hardware. So I'm using D-rings for this, not triangle rings. So you'll take your D-ring and you'll slide your connector through the D-ring or whatever hardware you're using, and then you'll clip it together. And you're doing this so that the short raw edges meet. And you'll do that for both. And then we'll baste stitch these together to help hold them in place so that they don't shift on you. It was a little bit frustrating to see that I got all the way through the video, got it all done, and realized that I had to go back and refilm the tutorial from basically halfway through the bag. But not the end of the world. Just cut another one out, and here we are. So now I have these basted together. So you'll see both the ends are basted together. Now we're going to place these connectors onto our aligning panel. Now, there's a mark that you need to make not only on your connector, but on your lining panel. So on the connector, you're going to be placing these so that the edge here is hanging off. So there's a mark that you'll make. You don't need to make the mark. She just gives the measurement, but I make the mark. So I take my clover taco and I measure down from the raw edge and I make the mark and that tells me where this needs to be lined up with the raw edge of my lining panel. And then on your lining panel, on the left hand side, you're going to make a mark over from this corner and make a measurement or mark at the measurement given. And I've already done that on both my lining panels. And you'll notice it's on the left hand side for both. And the reason for that is when we flip them so that they are right sides together and you look down into the bag, they are now on opposite ends. And you'll see when we attach the connectors, it'll make more sense. So again, I have that mark that I made for where the connector needs to be sticking up off the panel. So I'm just going to line up that mark with the top raw edge and also that mark here on the side, it's over. So from the left hand side over, so there's my mark, I'm placing the left hand side of my connector at that mark. And again, having it at that mark for where it needs to stick up off the edge of the lining panel. So it'll look just like this. And sorry buddy is back to visit again. And I don't know if you can hear her, she's just quietly purring away watching herself on camera as well. So that's how the first one looks when it's connected. So you see it sticks up off the edge of the fabric and that's the measurement given in the pattern for how far it needs to stick off. We'll put this one to the side. We'll repeat this whole process for the second. So again, the measurement over from the left hand corner over, I'm lining up the left hand side of my connector with that line lining up the top raw edge with that line I made on my connector for how far up off the edge of the fabric it needs to be and then base stitching it in place just like that and as 
I was saying, when we place them right sides together, this is where the connectors end up going on the opposite side. So see how there's one connector on one side and one on the other side? You can see them here this way. So that's how they end up being opposite sides. So make sure you put them on the same side. So the left hand side, the measurement over. If you accidentally mark on the right side, do the other one on the right hand side as well so that they're both on the same side when you're looking at them on the right hand side, at the right way. Because when you put them over, again, they're on the wrong sides now. They're opposite each other. Moving right along, we now need to attach our zipper panel that we, or closure panel that we created. First, we need to find the center mark of the zipper panel. So what you're going to do is just fold it in half, draw a line where that center mark is. What's going on, hey baby? Don't chew on the thread. So I'm just folding it in half, creating a crease, and then marking the center point. And this is going to stick up off the edge of the fabric as well, just like the connector. So it's going to be the same height as the connector. So I just went and made that mark on the wrong side here of my fabric or of my zipper panel, closure panel, sorry, I keep calling it the wrong thing. So you want this to be centered and you want it to stick up off the fabric so it's in line with that connector. So find the center mark. and line it up and then line it up with that line you made if you did what I did which was create a line and this is going to be a little bit trickier because it's sticking up off the edge here so we can't really pin it in the center so clip it at the side edges just like that so you'll see I have a clip there and that's why that line was really important to do to help me make sure I'm keeping it nice and straight so I have two clips just like that to hold it in place I'm going to stitch from this side right now, and I'm going to stitch just across this edge here to help hold this in place while I'm keeping this straight with this line that I made here on the wrong side of my closure panel. And I'm just basting this in place right now, but it's also centered. And if you want, you could use pins here. I'm just using clips and then just making sure it stays lined up as I go. Also, I have a dangly zipper pull, so I'm making sure that zipper pull doesn't get caught in my stitching as I'm stitching across. Just like that. Oops. So now that side is attached. And when you're attaching it, it's lining against the lining. So lining side against the lining side and your exterior when you're looking at it is going to be facing up because when we look into the bag you want the linings facing each other and you'll know you have it right because your zipper pull is on the upside facing you now we need to attach our top panel so k1 I just need to find it so k1 so now we're going to place k1 on top of this panel and again we can't see the side here where the top edges are, so I'm just going to make sure that this is lined up in the center so I can see the center mark here and I'm lining up my center points. And I'm clipping it in place. And I'm going to again sew on the wrong side so that I can see when I'm sewing across here where that top is. And I'm going to make sure that I keep everything nice and lined up so checking as I'm going along. Now, one thing to note, you'll notice your K1 is longer than your K2. Not to worry, that is right, you will have that and we'll trim it down after. Another thing I forgot to mention before we begin, if you haven't already, fuse your stabilizer to your K1. I always do that before I start making a bag so I don't ever think about doing it after and I don't have to stop to do it. But if you haven't already, fuse that piece of stabilizer to your K1 piece. Now we're going to top stitch this all the way across using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And just make sure you keep everything nice and lined up as best you can. And when you're stitching across here, you did that previous basting stitching, so you'll be able to sort of see where your seam allowance is for that using that as your seam allowance or seam guide. If you're concerned that you're not going to be able to keep an even seam allowance because you're, you're stowing where you can't see the top edge, 
don't panic. What you can do is draw your seam allowance, if you haven't already, straight across. So I didn't draw my seam allowance. Whoops. Sorry about that. I didn't draw my seam allowance on this, which is okay because I didn't feel I needed to. But that's why Kristen has you draw the seam allowances. And then you just stitch directly on top of it. And there's no wor uh, worries about having an accurate seam allowance or not. So that's how that looks right now with it attached. Now we're going to take this and we're going to flip it over. And then what you want to do is flip this panel so that everything is down behind going down towards K2. And then you want to give it a press. So I'll show you again. I'm just going to press this. I'll show you how it looks from the back side. So we take it and we just flip this. What you could do is have it this way so your K2 is facing you right now and flip this down. That's easier than the way I was showing you actually. Press it and you want everything to be going down in the back towards the wrong side of this panel so that your zipper closure panel is facing up and your strap um, connector, your crossbody connector is also pointing up. So once you have that like that, we're going to top stitch this seam right here under the zipper panel, the zipper closure panel and your connector. So the seam here, K2, we're top stitching on top of K2. And you may need to switch out to a bigger needle or you may want to use a walking foot for this or a humper jumper because there is a lot of bulk at some areas especially if you used vinyl like I did. Now for this bag I'm using a canvas so I have no interfacing on it whatsoever because it doesn't need it but on the other bag that I made I did have my interfacing on it. So if you are worried about bulk try a bigger needle. So there you go you can see I top stitched across there. Now we need to take and repeat that whole process for the second side. So take your lining panel, you're going to fold your zipper panel, or closure, sorry, top closure in half. And again, we have that mark that we made that we need to line up the panel with, as well as being centered. So line it all up. And again, if you're concerned about having your seam allowances be accurate, make sure you draw that seam allowance at the top of K2 so that you can stitch directly on top of it. And now I'm going to base stitch this in place. Flip it over. So now that's basted in place and I'm cutting all my little threads. And then we're going to add K1 and again, center it. And then line up those raw edges. Make sure your hardware is out of the way. And now we will stitch this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So from one end right to the other. And this is where the humper jumper may be needed for you, is right when you're going over that connector. Whoops. Right when you're sewing over that connector is where you may want to use a humper jumper. So again, with the panel still right, wrong side up, so this is K2 that I'm looking at, I'm going to flip K2 so I see the right side and give it a press with my finger. I'm using vinyl so I can't take this to my iron and press because I will end up pressing against my um, vinyl that I used. So. Now we're going to top stitch on top of K2. If you feel you need to, you can definitely take this to your iron and give it a press. Just be careful if you did use vinyl, I would recommend just finger pressing instead. So top stitching along K2. Remember that if 
you have a dangly zipper, so just keep it out of the way. So that is how it looks once you have the two stitched together. You have the two panels, and when you open it up, it looks like the inside of the bag. Now, we have to deal with these two lining pieces here where K1 and K2 are not the same. So K1 is a little bit longer than K2, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim it to be even with K2. So following that same angle too. If you're worried about that, you can draw that angle on and then just cut along the line you drew. But Kristen made this so that it's a little bit longer just because of sewing in case some there's not some in case there's some inaccurate seam allowances. So that's really handy that she did that. It'll make sure that your bag is nice and perfect and there's a little bit of room for errors in sewing. So now we need to secure our strap connectors here under here with a rivet. If you don't have a rivet, what you could do is sew a little box over these strap connectors so you can see them back here. You want to stitch just where the strap connector is and then you could sew a little X inside like a little barn door. And you can do that on both sides if you don't have rivets. So I'm going to go and put my rivets in and then I will come back and we will continue on. And one more thing, you can add rivets here too under where this top closure panel is. You can even add two rivets here on each end if you wanted. Just add a little bit of decoration inside. It's really your choice. Have fun with this. So I'm going to go install my rivets and then I will come back and we will continue on. All right, so I have installed the rivets in where my strap connectors or crossbody connectors are. So now we have this all complete and this is how it looks when you zip it closed. And it'll look like when you look from the inside, if you open it and your sides were sewn together, it'll look like that. Now we need to attach our divided zippered pocket that we made. So for this, I'm going to start with my zipper so that when it closes, it's closing to the left. And I'm going to make sure my divider pocket zipper as well closes to the left so that everything's closing to the same side. Now what we need to do is place it so that the corner of the divider zipper pocket and the corner of our lining match. So pin them together at those corners. Now what you're going to do is this straight edge here on your divider zipper pocket, the side straight edge, you're going to line it up with the side, it's not straight, sorry, angled edge. You're going to line that edge up with the side edge of your lining. Now your divider pocket right now won't be lined up at the bottom. It'll go up on an angle and that's okay. It'll fix itself when we attach it to the other side. So pin it to the side edge, so side edge of the divider pocket, pin to the side edge of the lining. Make sure the first thing you do is line up those corners. Once you have that pinned in place, we're going to sew that down. So just using a basting stitch, sew down the side edge of the divider pocket and your lining panel. So now that that is stuck in place, just like that. Next, we're going to take this other side of the lining panel. Now you want to make sure your zipper is not twisted. So zip up your zipper if it was unzipped and pin the side edges together. And the one thing I forgot to mention, which probably good that I forgot to mention because if you do this as well, you can easily fix it. If there's a mark from the bottom that you need to make, so going from the bottom up, there's a mark and that mark is for where you start and stop stitching. So I'm just going to unpick those stitches at the bottom where that mark is because I had made it but forgot about it. And it'll it'll fix this when I rebase when I restitch this together. So I'm not going to go back and stitch over that. I don't feel like I need to right now. But I did unpick it because there is a mark on the lining panel that I made from the bottom up where you stop or start sewing. So if you're starting from the top, you'll go down to the bottom and stop sewing at that line. If you're starting at the bottom, you'll start at that line and go up. So with the second side, we now need to pin that together. So line up your corners and pin it all the way up that side edge. Now pay special attention to where K1 and K2 meet. You want those seams to line up. You want it to be one continuous seam on the side there. 
So pin everything in place. And then we're going to stitch this entire edge down using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm going to start where that mark is. Now just be careful with your zipper tail, if there is a zipper tail there, or if you have any hardware that's dangling or anything like that, you don't want to stitch over it. Just like that. And that's what I was saying when I stitched, when I unpicked those stitches at the bottom, it doesn't matter because now we've got them all stuck together with that second stitching that I did. So now we have it open. If you can see, the bottom edges are left open here. There's not stitched down. Now we have to deal with this second side of the divider. So unzip your zipper if it's zipped, take the divider zipper pocket, and again, pull it over so it lines up with that bottom corner of the other side of the lining. So line up those bottom corners and pin it in place, just like that. And then same thing as we did on the other side, you're going to pin all the way up that side. I'm going to unzip my divider zipper pocket just a little bit so that I don't hit it. And sewing from the wrong side so I can see where that mark is, I'm going to start sewing there and sew all the way up. Keep those side edges all lined up. Clip any of your threads. And now that second side, you see how it's pulling that like that? The lining panel over, it's kind of making it give its shape already. Now we need to take this second side that's not attached and bring it over to this side. So bring it over, line up those bottom corners again, and put a pin. And then again, where K1 and K2 meet, pay special attention to that and line up that seam so you get a nice continuous seam there. Now you'll find that because this is pinned to the other side, it's going to pull. Just kind of smush it over so that it doesn't pull so much while you're pinning. And now we're going to sew that again, starting at that line at the bottom, from the bottom up that we made. And we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Again, be careful if you have any dangling hardware. Clip any threads that are there. And now we have our pocket attached. The center divider pocket is attached, so you can see it down here how it's attached. And this is already creating that shape for the bottom panel. And there it is inside. And our zippers both close going towards the same side, which is exactly what I wanted. I'm going to leave my top zipper open though, just to, for the rest of the bag. Now we need to attach our lining base to our lining panels. And you're gonna be thinking it's going to be a little bit difficult, but I promise it's really not. This is a really easy base to attach. So you have two pieces that look like this, and I fussy cut mine, well, sort of fussy cut them so that they line up, not really, but so that they're facing the same direction is what I'm trying to say. So you have straight edges on both, and you have the straight edge here in the center where your divider pocket is. We need to mark the center of this divider pocket. So fold it in half, find the center, and mark where the center is. This is very important. I feel that this step is a step you should not skip. And do the same on your lining base panels. Mark the centers, both sides, so right like that I 
I should have marked these before when I started, but I didn't. And I already have the center of the K2 piece marked, so I don't need to mark that. But if you didn't mark that, do it the same way we did for the center divider. Fold it in half and then find the center and make the mark. Now, we're going to take one of these lining pieces, lining base pieces, and we're going to take the center mark on the straight edge, so this straight edge, and we're going to line it up with the center mark on your divided zipper pocket. So there's the straight bottom edge on the divided zipper pocket is what you're lining it up with. You're not pinning any parts of K2 there, just the lining base and the center divider pocket. Keep the lining K2s out of the way. And you're going to pin this the rest of the way across the bottom, just along that straight edge. Now there's going to be a slight overhang and that's what you want. So there'll be some hanging off the edge here. You want that. Don't panic. You didn't do anything wrong. That's, that's right. That's what you want. Just make sure everything's all lined up and keep your K2 panels out of the way. Now we're going to sew this and I'm just going to base stitch this edge first and you're going to sew it along that straight edge, stopping and starting where the center divider starts and stops. And again, make sure that your K2 panel pieces are out of the way. You don't want to stitch those down at all. So just keep checking to make sure they're not in the way. And we're just basting this in place right now. Just like that. And now we have one of our lining base panels attached. So it looks like this. Now we have one attached. We need to attach the second side the exact same way. So line up your center marks, pin it in place, and then pin it the rest of the way. And the thing with this is now where there's that little extra overhang, you're actually going to be stitching that together. So you're going to stitch from one end of the base all the way to the other on that straight edge. all the way across and we'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern and again make sure Kate the K2 panels are tucked out of the way you don't want to stitch those at all they are not getting caught in this seam so you're just gonna have to keep checking making sure that there's nothing else under there but the center divider and the two lining base panels Just keep stopping to make sure that there's nothing else there. Trust me, it's worth it to take your time here and check. I know when I sewed the restoration handbag, I kept getting my lining stuck because I wasn't checking it. And so when I sewed the rest of them, I kept making sure and checking. So now we have the base attached to our center divider but now we need to attach it to K2 all the way around. So remember those center marks we made on the base here, so the interior base, that's M, we're going to take it and attach it to the center mark, line it up with the center mark on K2, pin it in place. And I'll add a pin before and a pin after it. Now what we're going to do is pin it the rest of the way around, but first I'm going to pin this side as well. So line up your center marks again, one before and one after. So it's looking like this so far. So I have the centers, the center of M and the center of K2 pinned together. Now we're going to clip it the rest of the way around, just as we did with our exterior. And again, this is going to be a tight fit, but it works, I promise. We're going to make those little snips again in the curves to really help get this to go nice and smooth and flat. And when you get around to this edge where it's not sewn, you're going to overlap them on the side there so that you close up any gaps that are there. So where this side is here, when you're pinning it, you want to overlap this seam where we stop stitching. You want to sort of overlap them so that they, just like that. So take one and place it over the other so that it helps close up that gap that we left there at the bottom. So keep 
keep pinning all the way around. My hands are starting to give out on me. going to feel like it's really tight and it is but that's what you want you want a really tight base so that you get a really nice base and again I'm overlapping those two seams so that we have no gaps there which means I put a clip right there on that seam I don't know if you can see that yeah you can see the clip right here and they overlap and I'm going to continue pinning all the way around and I'm just going to make sure my camera didn't unfocus so my camera is good and I'm checking it's still recording I hope it's still recording and it doesn't happen what happened last time so still pinning all the way around get those curves pinned Once we have this pinned, we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern all the way around. And when you get to these side seams, just make sure that those fabrics there that we overlap stay overlapped. And when you're stitching, this bottom seam, you want it to be pressed. So I'm just going to pin this first and show you what I mean. You want the bottom seam to be pressed. So that it goes the same way on both sides so if you're making it right now the way I have it I have the seam pointing down don't have one half up and one half down have them both going the same direction so that you don't end up with some extra weird bulk in those edges there so now I'm going to grab out my extension cable again and this just helps hold up the bag so that it doesn't want to fall down and pull while I'm stitching And we're going to stitch all the way around this whole bag. So find a place to start using the seam allowance, start stitching all the way around it. And make sure your stitch length is at the length you like to use when you're sewing structural seams. And I forgot to clip my curves, so I'm going to do that as I approach each curve, just snipping within my seam allowance. And that just helps open up those curves so that everything is nice and tidy. And I think when I get back to this straight side over here, I'll put my head so I don't have to stop. And remember, those seams here that we left where there was no stitching, we're stitching those so that they are overlapping. So I'm going to clip my curves before I come to them. It just makes it a little bit easier. Nothing is caught underneath your needle as you're sewing. Just the two panels, so K2 and the lining base. Um, that's M. And I'm at the curve where I snipped into the curves. And again, I want that side seam there to overlap. And I want to make sure that base seam in the center is facing the same way as it was on the other side of the bag. So you can see here, it's 
it's all stitched together. Now we're going to trim the seam allowance. And it's gonna feel a bit wonky trimming this seam allowance here because it's at the bottom. First, I'm going to stitch over that to reinforce those sides here. This is just a little optional part. You don't have to do this. This is just a personal preference. I just wanna make sure that this seam is nice and secure. So I'm going to trim my center bulk seam here. And what I do is I snip close first, going up. So there's my stitching. I snip right away from it, going up towards the other seam. So that creates like a little flap that I can get in there and cut it off. And avoid cutting the previous stitches or the stitches that hold the two seams together. Or in this case, six. And that's hard to do with my pinking shears for some reason. There we go. Now I'm going to use the painting shears on the outer edge here to trim my seam allowance down. Where all that bulk is again, I'm having a hard time cutting. So just keep snipping all the way around. And the reason why I use pinking shears is I just feel that if it's going to fray, the pinking shears will help stop it from fraying. The reason why we didn't trim that seam down too, the center seam before, is because you need it there to help when you're stitching all the way around the bag to make sure you catch that. Because if it's too small, it won't really get caught in that stitching on the side there when we're sewing the sides, around the sides of the base. So that is now all stitched. I'm just going to feel with my fingers, make sure there's no tiny little holes in the bottom here, which there is not. And that's how my base looks all sewn all the way around and as I was saying these seams here I overlapped them so one went this way and then I folded it so this one when it came over it ended up folding this first one over and that's how it looks now we're going to stitch the center the the seam here and what she has you do is stitch a little box all the way around and you're stopping just before you get to the seam where K2 is and it's just a little rectangle that she has you sew here and that'll help keep this seam open at the top here. So this helps keep K1 seam on the sides here open. And if you want to do the birthing method instead of doing the drop-in drop in lining method like we're going to do here, the restoration handbag video shows you how to make this a birth bag if you prefer to do a birth bag. So now we're going to stitch that little box to help hold those seams open. So stitch all the way around. And instead of a box, I'm just going to sew right up off the edge because you're not going to see that little part, top part of the box anyways. So I just sewed right off the edge. And I'm just stitching on, it basically what you're doing is stitching on either side of the line. You're stitching down the line and then back up the other side line or center seam, sorry. So stitching with the seam allowance given up now. So what I did was, here's my center seam, I stitched down, I went, when I got to where K2 is, I stopped and I came back up. So you're just stitching on either side. So it's kind of like top stitching on either side of that line of the center seam. Trimming my threads. Now, what we also need to do is, see how our zipper is sticking up? We don't want the zipper to stay sticking up like that. We want it to face down when we're using the bag. So we're going to take this, we're going to push the zipper down and we're going to top stitch along top of the closure panel here. So push it down, see how it's up right now, it's staying up. Push it down, 
press it down. If you're using the quilting cotton, you can take this to your iron and press it. I'm not, so I can't. But we're going to push it down, and then we're going to top stitch along the zipper panel there. And I'm just going to make sure my camera didn't go out of focus again because I did get really close to it. And now we're going to top stitch just along that zipper closure panel. And you may find that it's really bulky, so you may need to switch to a bigger needle. And I did do a bit of back stitching there to really help hold it in place because I feel that that will have a lot of stress that area. Clip your threads. And then that's how it looks when it's top stitched. See how I just top stitched along that edge? So now we're going to do that again. Push this down and top stitch along this closure panel there. Again, I'm going to make sure my camera didn't go out of focus. I'm trying to avoid what happened the last time. a bit there again just to make sure and now you'll see the zipper panel is being pushed down so instead of it sticking up when we close the bag it pushes it down into the bag so that it's kind of flat rather than sticking up off the edge so you see how it goes in I'm going to undo my zipper again and now we need to take the edges of our interior and we need to press them to the wrong side by the measurement given in the pattern. And that's helpful because we made that mark here so we know where to fold. So you'll want to use some double-sided tape. Place double-sided tape all the way around. And I did skip ahead. The top stitching of that zipper panel is done before this, is done after this, but I did this first just to get that stitching done and out of the way. It's only one step ahead, but that's okay. So I'm just placing my double-sided tape all the way around the whole edge. Make sure it's really stuck down. All right, and then I'm going to remove the paper backing, and I'm going to oops press this oops press this down at that line I made all the way around. And the nice thing about it is there's that interfacing that we put on our K1 panels that kind of helps know where your seam is as well. But in case you didn't put that on exactly where it should be, you do have that line to use. And because of the way the K1 interfacing, which I believe is L is what it's called, because of the way it was trimmed or cut, it's cut so it's not in this seam, which is really nice because you won't be sewing through a lot of extra bulk. So there's the first edge, all pressed down of my lining. So I've pressed it to the wrong side. Now we need to repeat that for the exterior. And if you find that your tape as you're doing this is starting to lift and it's not staying stuck down, add some clips to help hold it in place. So with our exterior right sides out, so there's the exterior of the new bag I made, isn't it pretty? The bottom, I didn't add any purse feet on this one. I love the color though. So now we're going to do the same thing, add the double sided tape all the way around. And again, the foam on this, if that's what you used, or whatever interfacing you used for your bag, I used foam for this one. Uh, you may have used fleece or Decoville Light. You'll find that it's trimmed so that it's out of that top seam. So you're not sewing through as much bulk. So when you fold this down, yes, we will be sewing through some foam, but we're only going to be sewing through one layer rather than two layers of foam, and then two layers of the interfacing in the K there. So remove the paper backing. I'm just going to make sure it's stuck. Remove the paper backing. 
and then start folding that down at that mark. And this is where I may need some clips because it's sticking to foam and I have these seams here that I really want to make sure don't come popping up. We are almost done. It's really exciting when we're at this part because the bag is almost done. I'm just going to take my sweater off because I'm starting to get a little bit warm. So now I have that one all pressed down at that line and again where my foam is I know that's where the line is going to be because it all lined up there so I'm just pushing it down where the foam is. Now we need to take our interior and put it in the exterior. Now the other thing I'm going to do again is I'm going to add some double sided tape again just to make sure it sticks in place and I'm going to stand for this part Ow. and I'm going to add some, oh my shirt's kind of I'm going to add some double sided tape all the way around, but I'm not going to add it right up against the top here because I don't want it sticking out. I'm going to go down a little bit and I'm going to place it all the way around. So not right up at the top. It's sort of going to be half on half off the folded down edge. Clips. attached. I have double sided tape placed all the way around inside. You can see it there. So now what I'm going to do is first make sure I didn't mess up the focus on my camera. I'm going to place my lining inside and when we place the lining inside what you want to do is ensure that your zippers are all facing the same direction when closed. So right now looking at the camera you can see the zipper closes on this side. So I want the zipper closer on the top, the zipper closure and the lining divider zipper pocket to all close in the same direction. So I'm going to stick this inside the bag, pushing it down in the bag, and then I'm going to remove the paper backing of my double sided tape, and I'm going to line up the center, the side seams of the lining with the side seams of the exterior, clip it in place. Always start with your seams, line up all your seams. They are your quarter markings. And then we can line up the center of this one with the center of the front. And again, place another clip and then the rest of it should just easily go into place. You may need to do a bit of maneuvering, and that's okay. Sometimes I find I have to. And just make sure your top edges all line up. This tape is really strong. Once you get it taped down, it's hard to remove, and Buddy just fell from where she's jumping. You okay? Excuse me for a minute, I'm just going to go check on her because she jumped and fell. Alright, she's okay, sorry about that, I just wanted to check on her and make sure she was okay, didn't get hurt. And here she is. She's a little bugger. Okay. So again, I'm just pinning and lining everything up. Just getting it all nicely lined up, take your time. Make sure your top edges are as lined up as you can get them. I like using double sided tape here because it helps hold everything for me too as I'm sewing. I know I'm going to place some clips, but having that there also helps with holding everything in place as I sew around so that nothing shifts on you. 
You okay still? She misjudged her jump. I think she's playing with her sister. the clips to hold the top together for now. Again, I know I said I used double-sided tape, but I, and I have double-sided tape stuck to my nails. Anyways, I like to have the clips just to help hold it as well, just to make sure, but the tape does hold it in place. So now we need to top stitch this, and if you're like me and you don't have a free arm on your machine, it may seem like it's not going to work and be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'm going to put my extension table on. And then I'm going to take the bag, actually I'm going to do this, let's just see what makes more sense. I wonder if it makes more sense to have the extension table on or have it off. I think the extension table off for me may be the best bet. We'll see as I'm going along. I can't remember what I did on the other bag. I think I did it without the extension table. So. We need to top stitch this, but we want to top stitch, or I do, you don't have to, I like to top stitch on the right side of my bag so that that top stitching looks better because sometimes I find the bobbin side of my top stitching doesn't always look as nice. So check to make sure you have a full bobbin and we're going to top stitch this. Now normally, if you watch my tutorials, I turn the bag so that it is lining side out and then I can see and top stitch, but I'm not going to do this with this one because it's a drop in lining and I want to show you that it can be done even without a free arm on your machine. So starting on one of the side seams, making sure all the hardware is out of the way. You kind of got to squish the bag. Don't be afraid to squish it. So squish the bag underneath the presser foot. And I always start with my needle down for this, this kind of style of top stitching. Start stitching. I'm going to give it a few good back stitches just to make sure. Make sure you're holding your handles out of the way but you see how it's just sort of like I'm pushing it down and I'm not afraid to squish the bag don't be afraid to squish it because we'll give it a good pressing after and now with the clips not there it's kind of wrapping underneath my machine almost like it's acting like it is a free arm but it's just when I get started because I have all the clips on it in the way. And again, make sure any hardware that you have on the bag is not in the way. You don't want to hit any hardware. You will break a needle and possibly do damage to your machine. to use a coordinating thread for this just so that when I'm back stitching you don't see it. And a long stitch length will help as well and that'll prevent any skip stitches. So I don't have any skip stitches and it's actually really hard to see the top stitching but there's no skip stitches. 
if you do find that you're getting skip stitches, don't panic. What you can do, and I feel a thread somewhere here, what you can do is unpick your thread, so unpick it, so break the thread somewhere, and then unpick all the way to your side seams here on both sides, and then pull it through, tie it off, and then what you'll do is just backstitch and go all the way to the other side seam and backstitch on the other side seam. What this will do is it'll help prevent that from fraying, but it'll also be that your backstitching is on the sides here so you won't notice it as much. Or instead of backstitching, leave long tails, pull them through as we did previously in the other steps of the bag, pull the long tails through, tie them off, and you won't see any backstitching at all. And that's what you can do if you get some skip stitching when you're backstitching. And I'm going to cut these threads. I don't know what they're for. They're not for anything now. So now you can see the bag has taken on its shape. We have our connectors, which I'm going to push up. And what I need to do now is create my crossbody strap and we also need to add the hardware to the end of the zipper as well, if you're choosing to add the hardware. But that's the bag so far. Isn't it beautiful? I love how it looks. Very nice, very fancy. So to create the crossbody strap, you're going to have a long piece that looks like this. And the first thing you need to do is draw a line down the entire length of the strap down the center. So I'm going to go off camera and draw that now and then I'll come back and we will continue on. Alright, so I have the line drawn down the entire length of the strap, the center length. On my other bag I did a double sided strap and there's many methods to use when making a double sided strap but I will link it below so that if you want to make this strap a double sided strap you can. But we're going to do this as instructed in the instructions and if you're using a vinyl you don't need to fold these edges you can leave them raw which is what i'm going to do i may decide to add some strap end hardware on the end i'll decide after the bag is completed but for now i'm going to leave it like this if you're using a quilting cotton what you'll want to do is fold this short raw edge so that it meets wrong sides together just like that and then you'll continue with the folding that we're going to do now so what first thing you need to do is, if you're using quilting cotton, you can just press this directly in half. And you can use your iron to do that. I'm using vinyl, so I need to use double-sided tape. And you can also use double-sided tape with quilting cotton too. So I'm using double-sided tape down the entire length of the strap on that center line. And just as we did when we folded the, I'm trying to remember, the handles, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold those long edges in to meet the center mark. If you're using quilting cotton, you can press it with your iron. So remove the paper backing from the double sided tape. I'm sure Buddy will love that, seeing that. All right, now we're going to fold the long edges in to meet the center. But don't make it press right against the center. Leave a little bit of space between the center and the long raw edge of the material. So it's not touching the center line because you want to leave that small gap in the center because we are going to be folding this again and you don't want to have any bulk in that folded area. It'll help make it for a nicer strap. So folding it all the way down. On to the next side. Leaving a small, small gap. Right. so now we have the long edges folded in to meet the center. 
Now we're going to just take this and fold it right in half, just like that. And we're going to use some more double-sided tape, or I am anyway, oops, anyways, to help make sure it stays in place, because sometimes I find it moves on me a little bit, even with clips. Just place it in the center of one of the halves. Placing it in the center sort of helps prevent you from sewing through so much double-sided tape. I'm just peeling this back to make sure it goes in the center because it didn't really get centered there. There we go. Now we can fold this in half. Make sure the edges meet. Just like that. And now we're going to top stitch this all the way around. So you're going to start on one short edge. You can back stitch, come up one side, all the way down. Now, if you want to avoid twisting of your strap, back stitch when you get down here on this long, short raw edge come back to where we started and again back stitch on the short edge go all the way around back down to the other short edge and that will prevent the stitch the stretch uh, the twisting sorry of your strap to come back up and stitch down this side now to prevent that twisting and I don't often get twisting if I do and I've made it out of a quilting cotton I just take it to my iron and give it a really good press again so I press the whole length of the strap If you have uneven ends here, just trim them up if you used vinyl. And that is how your strap looks so far, all top stitched. Now we need to add our hardware. So we need one slider and two swivel hooks. And that's if you're doing this. If you're not doing this, you're already done your bag. You can add your little zipper end if you want or make a little fabric zipper tab. So what you're going to do is grab the short raw edge, slide it through your slider, bring it over the middle bar and clip it in place. Now, I may go off camera after and add, well, I'm going to go off camera because I'm going to use a rivet here, but you can sew a box with an X in it here. I'm gonna go off camera and I'll probably install some strap ends here so that I have some nice finished ends because I'm not sure if I wanna keep it like this. You could also add some edge paint to the edge here if you don't have strap ends. But what you would do is, as I just did there, bring it up over the center bar so that's how it looks and you'll sew 
a cross, and you could sew a box with an X or use a rivet. As I mentioned, I'm going to be adding a rivet. So now with the um, crossbody strap, with the side where that we just folded over and your slider facing up, you want to go to the other end, so to this end here, and you want to add a swivel hook. So with the hook part against your table, slide the short edge of the strap in through the, the ring on the swivel hook, just like that. Bring that short end, again, up to where the slider is, bring it through your slider, so just like that, and then back over that middle bar and back down. So looking like this so far. And now with your slider, so it's against the table, find the short end again of your strap, the loose short end, swivel hook against the table, slide the short end of the strap through the hardware on the swivel hook, fold the strap over, clip it in place, and then you can either sew, add a rivet, use a Chicago screw, whichever you prefer. So I'm gonna go off camera, I'm going to add my rivets, and I'm also going to add some strap ends to these just so that I have a little bit of finished look on the edge here. And I will come back and we will see how it all looks when it's done. All right, so I have added my rivets to my crossbody strap, and I also added some strap end hardware. So you just slide it onto the end and screw in the little screws. You can leave it raw or fold it as I had shown you. I also have another technique that I use for making nicer finished ends of your strap. So I'll link that below in the tutorial as well. But here is our bag finished and I'll show you the other one. This is the one that I started working on before the camera messed up and stopped recording on me. So this is the two bags, they both look the same. However, on this one, I did something a little bit different when I added my handles. I did a little optional top stitching underneath here to help hold this down because if you notice on this one, it's kind of peeking up a little bit, even though I really pulled it down and I used some double-sided tape, it's still kind of peeking up. I do like it because it does add kind of like a little frame, a little focal point, and it also looks like a little set of eyes, oops, and a mouth too, it's kind of funny. But I do like it that it kind of adds a little bit of decoration and kind of frames the handles, so I do like it. You'll notice on this side it's not as noticeable because the fabric blends, but I do like it. But on this one, it just helped to hold that fabric down so it's not peeking out as much, and I did that on all of them. So this is meant to be the front of the bag. However, I do like my zippers on the front of my bag because that's where I generally put my phone or any other important pieces but this is the front and you can add a little logo on the front or as i was mentioning you can fussy cut some panels or do some embroidery anything you want so that is how it looks here's the first one that i was working on before the camera went wonky on me and then here's the one i finished with so we've installed our crossbody strap our handles we have our zipper opening i also installed my zipper end on the end and we have our divider pocket slip pocket and our inside of our bag we now have a beautiful finished restoration mini crossbody bag i really hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up a few tips and tricks along the way i'm looking forward to seeing all your beautiful mini or crossbody mini restoration bags a restoration mini crossbody bag wow that's a tongue twister restoration mini crossbody bag posted on social media don't forget to use the hashtags that are given in the pattern and also post it in the kmg bag makers group on facebook too so we can all see your beautiful bags and ooh and ah at it with you so again i hope you enjoyed sewing along with me i'm looking forward to seeing your bags hope you all have a wonderful day bye